put this show on the road. All right, let me call to order the uh, Fox Canyon Groundwater Management uh, Agency meeting for uh, Wednesday, October 23rd. If you'll rise, please. Charlie, you want to lead us, please? Please place your hand over your heart and follow me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Okay. Roll call, please. Chair Mahart? Uh, Chair Mahart? Hear. Yeah, here. Is your speak and microphone on? Uh, so. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Here it is. Director Craven? Here. Director Kelly? Here. Director Borchard? Here. Okay. Uh, Andy Waters and uh, Dave Schwabauer and Dan Nauman as alternates are in the audience. Anybody else hiding, sleeping on the floor that we have to wake up? Okay. Uh, agenda review? Uh, Chair, there's one small change. Um, the correspondence included as part of the administrative reports in item 5 should be labeled at the bottom items 5E, 1 through uh, 4. Instead, they're labeled 5F, 1 through 4. Other than that, no changes. Okay. Any other changes, corrections to the uh, agenda? Any objection? Okay, hearing none, it's uh, approved. Let's deal with uh, public comments. Anybody in the public want to address the board on issues not on the agenda? Okay. Uh, board member comments. Welcome back. <laughs> so this is the GMAI. <laughs> Have we met in this room before? I don't recognize <laughs> it. <laughs> Okay, uh, we have a consent uh, item, please. Approval of minutes. Move the approval. Second. Uh, motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, hearing none. Informational item. Robert. Oops. Good afternoon, Chairman Mohart and directors. For the record, my name is Kathleen Rydell. I'm here to present the update on the Las Postas Users Group's meetings. And um, this morning, it was their first meeting since the last FCGMA board meeting, and they had a meeting this morning. And the topics they touched on were the Las Postas infrastructure study. They provided an update on their committee meeting. There was the Las Postas groundwater export policy committee update. Um, Mr. Aranio, the chairman of the Las Postas users group following me, will give you more information on these items. Um, based on specific groundwater management plan status, they, it is in progress, and they are reorganizing the chapters so that um, to more clearly uh, line out in detail additional information on that. Um, correspondence sent and received uh, highlighted was the fact that the Fox Canyon Groundwater Management Agency issued its request for proposal for the um, well inspection program this last week, so that was highlighted at the LPUG meeting. And then uh, additional items, Solano Verde Crestview Mutual um, allocation, uh, request for transfer of historical allocation that was touched on and it was brought out that the executive committee meeting will be um, discussing this at the, uh, on November 15th. Upcoming uh, M&I allocation adjustments, um, this was just at the executive committee, and so that um, they uh, appreciated, uh, it was brought out that LPUG greatly appreciated the flow charts that were prepared to show the process in which the well applications are go through and all the steps that the agency takes to get those processed and what additional steps would be incorporated if we went per their proposed ordinance code change. And so that was further discussed, and I understand that Carol Schoen has uh, provided um, additional information. We haven't seen it yet uh, to further simplify that process. And so we look forward to receiving that. Um, we look, they looked at uh, two FCGMA well permit applications this morning. One is going to come go back to them, and one they had no comment other than requesting that for Ferraro's 
replacement well that the original well that they're having difficulties with is destroyed when they get the replacement well. And then um, they discussed the ground, uh, what, what, what is, was going to be item five for the last FCGMA meeting water level trends, those groundwater maps. They discussed that briefly and uh, recognized that there's an upcoming technical meeting coming up on November, um, October 28th. And then we reviewed today's FCGMA agenda. So okay. Robert Arania will provide further details. All right, thank you. Excuse me quickly, the October 28th technical meeting, what is that? That's gonna be uh, geologists from United, uh, County and GMA, uh, Cayugas, as well as Zone. So essentially small technical group to basically just go through the maps and understand the data, data availability, data quality, quality assurance. Okay, Robert. Good afternoon, Chair, members of the board, Robert Aranio from Crestview Mutual, and also here to talk with about the uh, Las Postas Basin Users Group. One thing I wanted to touch on was, um, as Kathleen alluded to, the phase one of the uh, basin infrastructure study is done. And what that was, was a study that was funded through Prop 84, $30,000 that the GMA also contributed towards, and then Cayegas putting in the balance of the money was for a consultant to come in and take a look at all the existing infrastructure that is existing in the valley and just map that out. Uh, phase two has been awarded now and that's going to be going and taking a look uh, regardless of political boundaries what infrastructure needs to be added and what infrastructure what makes the most sense for infrastructure to be joined in order to move molecules of water if a desalter happens to get built. It's also going to be uh, putting in about uh, uh, some shallow monitoring wells and we expect that uh, part of this study to be done here within the next uh, six to nine months range before that will be released probably. Um, as uh, Kathleen alluded to, we uh, touched again on the export policy. That policy was approved by our group and will go ahead and be uh, put into the plan. There were, even though it's been out there for a month now, we were looking to see if anyone had a chance to read through and if they had a particular heartburn of it. Uh, we got very little feedback on it, so uh, we're going to consider that one done. And we are scheduling here uh, very soon for the transfer um, policy group to get together and see if we can finalize that. Uh, all of this is filler work that is part of the plan. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is Mr. Bennett over and again has stated that he has some frustrations with how slow this plan is developing and that we don't have a better work product here for you. Um, our first work product showed that there were some areas that we were lacking and that we needed some strength on. And so we're going back and we're putting those parts of this plan together and it's filler. And as any extensive plan goes, whether it be a habitat conservation or a basin management plan with this many stakeholders, it takes a little bit of time for everyone to come up to speed and be in agreement with what it is that we're trying to do. Um, and so I, again, I ask for your patience and understand we are getting things checked off the list and we are moving forward on it. Um, and it's not delayed for any other reason than the fact of management of resources and identifying the priorities. Um, to and, that end. And is the, and is the goal, I mean, it's one thing to ask for patience and I, I appreciate that you know, with many stakeholders and stuff. Is the goal to actually come up with a hard plan that's going to address that you feel like it's going to really address all the issues that are, are there? And less well, we already have a plan. What we've done now is we're in the process of taking the comments that were received back on that through the comment period and incorporating those into revision two. And uh, part of that has to do with, as I mentioned last month, a, a redesign of some of the chapters in order to find data easier and in order to be able to get to the point of information that you're looking for. Um, and that was discussed about today also as to how those new chapters are going to be added and what they're going to be covering in order to make it more simple, simplified to understand and comprehend what it is that we're trying to do. So yes, answer to the question, yes, we would dearly love to walk up right now and hand you a book about that thick with our saying, this is what we're going to do over the next 20 years. And this is how we're going to get there. And this is what's going to happen if we fail. And this is what you're going to do to us if we fail. We're working to that. Okay, thank you. Okay. okay. Um, 
The surprise for me as chairman of what came out today was, uh, as was mentioned, the operations committee has released the, or correction, the GMA staff has released uh, the request for proposals having to do with uh, wellhead monitoring. Uh, as you know, this has been an issue that was born out of the uh, Las Posas Basin and has been rather contentious in our nature with some of our stakeholders. And quite simply, there was no comment on it today. So I look at that as a very good thing that it's understood as to where we're going, what the direction is that the Operations Committee provided um, and the GMA in order for uh, how this is to work and that there might be some acceptance as to what we're trying to accomplish and less um, concern on behalf of the stakeholders as to where this is going to go or how this information is going to be used. Okay, good. And that's it. Any questions? Okay. Uh, good. Anybody have any uh, additional questions for Bob? Anybody in the audience? Okay, thank you. Uh, let's go to uh, action items uh, number three. Oh, uh, receive and file. Let's receive and file the report. Second. Um, any objections? Hearing none, uh, so ordered. Let's deal with uh, item number three. Thank you, Chair Mulhart, uh, board members, members of the audience, Gerhard Hubner, Watershed Protection District. I'll be presenting this item. This item is item number three on today's agenda. It's the proposed resolution number 2013 3, a resolution increasing the tiered groundwater surcharge rates pursuant to the ordinance code. And I have a short presentation uh, to walk you through it. So, a little background. Uh, historically, the agency has tied its surcharge rates to Cayugas Municipal Water District's Tier 2 water rate, the imported water rate. These Tier 2 rates, as I understand it, are set to recover the cost to import potable water from Metropolitan Water District. Cayugas is, has uh, stated intent, in fact, uh, I believe their board, per the minutes that I have, have adopted an increase in that Tier 2 water rate that will take effect on January 1st to $1,315 per acre foot. Some more background for you, uh, a little bit of the agency's history in terms of its surcharge rate. Uh, back in 1998, uh, the surcharge rate was $725 per acre foot, increased in 2008. Uh, 2009, it went to $1,150 per acre foot. And you last revisited this issue in December 2010. You established three rates, three tiers at that time, with $1,105 as the baseline, and that was effective January 1st, 2011. So today we have a resolution, proposed resolution before you. Uh, it is, proposes the same three tier rates that you established back in 2010. Uh, it essentially is, inserts the new tier two rate within those tiers. So you can see uh, for the first tier, uh, 25 acre feet or less above their historical allocation, a person would be charged $1,315. 25 acre feet uh, above to 100 acre foot would go to 1565 so that's an increment of $250 per acre foot. And then for uh, the large extractors or, or those above 100 acre foot per year, that, would, that tiered rate would be $1,850. Essentially that's, that's $500 or another $250 above tier, tier two. Uh, the proposal is to make it effective in line with Cayugas' uh, increase. That would, so it would take effect January 1st, 2014. And at this time, we have not inc uh, included an automatic increase. Essentially, we haven't tied it to any future increases of Cayugas, but that's certainly something that you can consider. So in conclusion, uh, again, these are similar to what we've done in the past. Uh, the cost and reliability of imported water continues to rise. Uh, these tier rates are to account uh, for the cost of new water. Uh, again, I want to emphasize this is not, we don't propose these as a revenue generating mechanism. This is a disincentive to uh, over extraction. I want to point out, uh, again, has it been effective? 
Uh, we looked at the data. Essentially, we had six operators this past fiscal year. Uh, one in particular that has in the past incurred the most surcharges. So essentially, it ha we believe it has, has been effective, kept it to a small number of, of folks. And in fact, uh, the most recent uh, statement, I looked at the data, uh, we had just three operators in surcharge. You have a number of options today that you can consider. You can leave the surcharge essentially where it is, uh, will remain in effect, uh, and resolution nine, resolution 2000-7 essentially is, is, stays in place. Uh, you could basically go back to the one tier rate um, and fix it at $1,300. That would be in line with uh, past practices or some higher rate. Uh, or what we've proposed, the tiered rates, three rates adjusted to the new Cayagas Tier 2 rate of $1,315. And that is our uh, recommendation, option number three, in that you adopt resolution 2013-3. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Yeah, any members have any questions? Yes. Uh, Gerhardt, you said that current look at the data indicated that you had only three people going into the surcharge uh -huh. area as opposed to the previous six. Is that and what you just said? Yes. That's what the current data based on the last semi-annual statement results that we've gotten in. So that would indicate that the current rate is effective. Uh, continues to be effective, yes. And my, my concern is that you, you've got one individual, one operator, who is amassing the majority of the surcharges. And he's instituted a, a multitude of uh, systems and, and operations in his operation to uh, recycle and reuse and reclaim. Uh, I'm not sure he can be any more efficient, or really anybody could be a more efficient agricultural operator. And so my concern would be that this uh, appear like a fundraising effort against one person. Uh, I guess I would counter in the, knowing the history of that operator, and that operator actually will be coming and be a recipient of great water in the near future. Irregardless, they're likely to come off our surcharge uh, rate or, or surcharge penalties in the very near future, perhaps in a year or two anyway. Which I was going to finish with that very point that in, case, in, in that fact, he's, I think, making great strides about uh, installing pipelines and, and spending money to take that great water out to him, and at what point I don't, I don't think we'll see him anymore. Um, it, it seems to be, uh, in my mind, a little bit unfair for that one operator. Well, I'll weigh in. I, 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 get, I don't see it unfair at all. I mean, there's a surcharge because he's going over his allocation. And uh, uh, the surcharge, it, make, it's, it, it makes common sense to tie the surcharge to, to the cost of replacement water. So we don't calculate, have to constantly keep track of the cost of, of, of replacement water. We have Cayugas do that. So I guess I would ask the question, why wouldn't we stick with our policy, which is our policy is to pay the cost of replacement water? Yeah, it's, I, I, I mean, it's, you know, he, he's making a, a, a business decision um, uh, and, and knows that as the cost of water goes up, the surcharge is going to go up um, uh, to replace I would, it. So I would I, also I offer that the tiered rates of the tiered are, are based on the amount of crown water, and certainly that particular operator is always in tier three. It's the only one, yet the others are, are either in the middle, the second tier, or the first tier. Um, of course, we want to across the agency kind of disincentive. And we base the tiers based on the quantity of over extraction. At least that was a consideration three years ago. So if that operator is the one who is going into that third tier, then he will uh, proportionally share the highest portion of that penalty. And I'm not against the penalty. And we all agree that there should be a surcharge. What I'm trying to say is, is, and you're right, it is a business decision that he's decided to exceed his allotment, and he's accepted that. Why not allow him to get the pipeline out to him and solve this problem instead of uh, this penalty well, going against one person in, in a 
Yeah, number one, because it, it would demonstrate that we're just being consistent with our policy. What if what if the rate goes up? What if we didn't do it this year? What if next year the replacement water for rate goes up and it's somebody who's over pumping and you're not happy with them and you decide to do it? Now, are you being capricious and arbitrary and sometimes you're raising your surcharge rate uh, and sometimes yeah. you're not? I mean, it's, it's just a clear, this is the policy. It's the policy of the board. I would be voting for this whether he was in overcharge, you know, whether he was having surcharges or not. Uh, I would be voting for this, and that's from a from a setting government policy standpoint. I don't think we should consider that he's making, you know, this kind of effort or that kind of. Effort. He's making those efforts partially because he has surcharges that he has to pay, and so he'll be have even more incentive to make those those efforts to do that. But I I mean, it that's. Come up. I mean, if there's a different policy, if our policy is going to be, our policy should be independent of what one operator is doing. So the question would be, what should our policy be on surcharge? Should we raise our surcharge when the when the cost of of replacement water goes up? Seems like a good policy. Is there if there? I'd like to hear about a different policy rather than something because of this specific operator, which could which strikes me as subjective, and we like him or we don't like him, and we put it no, on. No, it's don't. not a like or dislike. Well, I, uh, I'm not saying that it is, but I'm saying that's how it can be perceived. You know, no. uh, so what's the policy that you would would replace this with? And I don't know if I agree that, that we've had a consistent policy of of tracking Cayegas every time they make a jump. I think the idea of the policy was to disincentivize. Over pumping, and I think we're doing that, and it, it's indicated by the uh, record search that it is having a good effect, the effect that we want. Well, I, I could be wrong. I mean, it, it is so speaking it's from an agricultural person's point of view, that uh, this individual has been in, uh, amassing these surcharges for a number of years, and yes, it's his decision, and it's a business decision that he's decided to go with. It seems a little bit capricious in my mind of us to continue to. Uh, Stick it to the one guy. It, what what have we consistently raised the rates as the new replacement water? Have I don't think that's the case. Since we've been, it, it got tied um, when this particular case was first discovered um, and brought to our attention. That discussion happened, and that's when it got tied to the rate, and it's been tied to that rate since then. And I believe that was somewhere in the 2007 or 8 range. And the discussion was we need to um, disincentivize, and, that, and, and that's when the replacement water got tied. Prior to that, it may or may not have been. I don't know. But for the last five years, that's been the policy. If, that's if, my if, recollection. If, if the rate has gone up, the replacement water rate has gone up, have we raised rates, or has the replacement water not gone up? Since we, have, we have followed the Cayagas. Cayagas is, I'm not saying we've done it every time they've raised it, but we've always tied it to their imported water rates, historically, throughout the agencies, and as long as, as Jeff and I have certainly been uh, working as agencies staff, that is how we've consistently uh, brought forth the surcharges. When, when, when we first created the concept of a surcharge, it was tied to, um, it was tied to our belief that a certain dollar amount would dis disincentivize uh, an individual from overpumping. And that, that actually went on for a number of years. And when we found that that actually wasn't operating, and I think when we first proposed the biggest change, I think at one time it was started at $250 an acre foot, and we made the first big change, we determined a concept that it should be pegged to the cost of replacing water. And hence, the Kiegas number took on a life. How far back that went, I don't know. But that concept of the cost of replacing water is what it should, should be pegged mm -hmm. to. And I think we went from 250 and doubled it. And as you can see in the staff's report, it increased pretty rapidly after that. And I do believe in the last five years or so, four or five years, we have pegged it as consistently as we can to Kiegas' rate though we don't have the flexibility that Kiegas has in setting the rates because of the way we report. So we, like this one doesn't go effective until um, January of 14. Right. Um, I, I, I'm hearing both arguments. And um, I, I guess my uh, lean is, is that 
if you take out the operator equation of this, then personalities and business decisions don't weigh in. It's what is our mandate. And our mandate is to try to get this aquifer back into balance. And there are some people that are adding to the problem, not subtracting to the problem. And we're going to have to figure out a way to bring in water to replace what they're doing. And that's what we pegged it to. Hence, it's a replacement, theoretically, and a replacement surcharge. Um, I also know that the, the message I've heard repeatedly from the constituents is we've got to find new sources of water. And the only two, no, two new sources of water that I know of, potentially, are expanding the great program from the existing one facility to the um, next two skids. The great program contract, as it's written, is a term, I believe, of a two-year <coughs> test period. Then it goes into a 10-year period. John is sitting here, so that's a total of 12 years. So, in, so the, having growers make a calculated business decision that they need to participate in the process of bringing new water in because the cost of trying to mine the aquifer is an unaccepted I think speaks to the fact that we have to make sure that the cost of replacing water reflects what it's pegged to in Cayugas. And, and it's not for or against any operator. It's frankly an issue that I, I don't think in this position I need to be looking at. I think I need to be looking at keeping a policy in place that pegs it to replacement water because in fact the message I get from the growers is find me replacement waters and a group of growers have gone out and invested and will invest with the city of Oxnard into the great program. Uh, I think we need to motivate other growers at some point in time if the costs continue to go up that they ought to be willing to put up the money for skid two or skid three to bring that water into the system and unless you have a true value of replacement water, I'm not sure you ever reach that threshold. So my leaning is, is to be consistent with the way we've dealt with this policy over the last several years. Um, and that is, as there's obviously a change with Kiegas's number, we, we should change as well because it's a replacement policy. I am hopeful that growers out there recognize that replacing water, if you overuse what you are authorized, there is a business decision you have to make. And there may be alternatives, as this group has done through PV and United and the city of Oxnard. So I lean to uh, um, agreeing to uh, the staff's recommendation. Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I agree with what Supervisor Bennett said and with what you said, so I could support this. Okay. Any other discussion from the audience or a mic? Yeah. I, um, the one thing I would like to see, and, and when we uh, did it in 2010, <clears throat> we took um, the automatic raise out, and I would like to qu suggest that we put it back in, and that would be that whenever Cayegas's rate changes on January 1 of the following year, our rate follows Cayegas's rate. That way we don't have to worry about that they went up and we didn't notice it or something. Um, and it was in the 2010 uh, presentation and we chose not to do that. I would ask that we might put it back in. Yes. Have we had that? Have we had it in there before? We, just for clarification, it was <coughs> considered back in 2010 in October. I have that language. In the, the, answer is, the answer is no. It was okay. a recommendation that you chose not to. Uh, okay. I, I, Mike, I understand your logic, and I think there's merit to your logic. I guess what I lean to is, is that I think we have a responsibility as an agency to make decisions, and, and if it means every year we run this issue up and down the flagpole and reaffirm uh, what our logic is, uh, that may actually be a good thing, and it becomes visited every year. I mean, these are significant numbers. These are significant numbers. I get it. I, I would hate to be put in the position of, on my own well-being, paying these numbers, and I don't because I'm not in that position. But they're significant numbers. And maybe the very fact that we actually have to have this discussion is a good thing for the record. And so based on that, I would lean 
to not make it automatic so it does come back for us to visit it so that we have a chance to talk about it. On the other hand, I understand the logic of making it automatic so we don't have to deal with it. It just happens. It, so it, I'm, I'm open, but I want to put that other side of the I equation. was wondering, because Supervisor Bennett seconded my suggestion, does that mean we have a, a proposed amendment on the floor? If, if you're making it as a motion. Well, we didn't have a motion to begin <laughs> with. <laughs> well, it was kind we of, we motions. kind of worked around. I, but I just, well, Ro 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 Robert's uh, screwed up orders. Well, I, I, here, here's my commitment to you. We'll, we'll have a chance to debate all, uh, we'll have a chance to put the motions in if that's what you want. And I didn't mean to do this as a way of <laughs> circumventing Robert's rules. Yes, sir. Could, be, before, could I just, I just want to continue this Mr. conversation Nash, real just quick. before. Just have a question, particularly for the two, two uh, ag representatives that we have here. Uh, if, if the cost of, if the surcharge is less than the cost of replacement water, does that create an incentive for somebody to say, I'll just pump it out of the aquifer rather than buy it from Cayegas or United? Well, the replacement water is also 1,300 number, so yeah. The 500 additional penalty for excessive overdraft goes beyond replacement as a penalty, but the 500 a foot to me is not an onerous number as much as it might to others. But but just just the concept: if if the cost of replacement water is is you know buying replacement water from Cayugas and United is less than what you would have to pay from a penalty from from Fox Canyon, would you? Would you have an incentive? Would, 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 would some growers have an incentive to just go ahead and pump from the aquifer? It seems logical to me, but there may be something I'm missing. So I'm, I'm genuinely well, I asking I think the, the missing question. part of that is you basically have one operator who is able to sustain that high rate. That, that surcharge rate is not a rate that, that any other grower could handle in his operation. Could afford to. We have, we have a, a surcharge rate right now that I think in itself is adequate. And, and we see that it's proved out in the records. It is deterring excess pumping, but for this one operator, mm -hmm. who because of his operation and his, and his individual, the way it works, I think he he's going to continue to over pump until he builds a pipeline and take that great water. Mm -hmm. Okay. My only point would be that, so you're going to increase the surcharge on the one individual at the same time when he's making the good faith effort to do exactly what our chairman said, utilize that new water and get off the aquifer. Again, it seems to me to be a little bit of an unfair stab at a, at a guy who's trying to fix the problem. And if, if it weren't for him, I don't know that we'd have this great urge to raise the rate, because it's being effective. Yeah, any more questions? Yes, sir. Um, thank you, uh, Chair Mulhart and um, directors and staff. Uh, Steve Nash speaking as a resident of Oxnard. And I don't really have anything new to add to the conversation except to say that a unit of water, you treat a unit of water uh, the same everywhere within the basin. And I don't believe it should be treated the same. Uh, a unit of water from this particular area out in Pleasant Valley should be more expensive. I, I know you can't really do it that way, um, but it should be more expensive than um, you know, a more easily recharged uh, area of, of the basin. Now, um, you know, this has to be based on, on economics, I mean, plain and simple. And the whole point is to uh, drive the, uh, the, uh, the extractors, the farmers, to utilize um, AWPF water. I mean, that's, that, that, should be, that should be your goal. That's, that's, that's my goal. Um, that's kind of a no-brainer, and you have to do that economically. The, um, the fact that the pipeline from the AWPF uh, out to the growers, that, that is a cost that's being borne really by, by, the, by the residents of Oxnard. The, 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 uh, the farmers aren't, aren't really putting up the money to pay for that. Whether the city can recoup that money um, through, uh, through the sale of water in the future, I, you know, I don't know, that's, who knows. Um, but I think it, you know, it serves the, you know, it serves the public good by, um, you know, reducing extraction in this in this in this sub basin. That's 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 what we need to do. Um, so I think that's probably all I had to say on this matter. But 
Um, you know, water, water should be prized in such a way as to um, drive the, uh, the environmental and the political uh, mandates that, that, we are, that, that you operate under. So thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. My name is Jeanette Lombardo. And I want to support David's uh, line of thinking for a couple of reasons. This particular grower, um, he has won national awards, as we all are aware of, for the, the green technology he has implemented in his facility. His commodity group, you may know I have a federal appointment to the USDA for an egg services division, so I work a lot on international trade. His particular commodity group has had a lot of uh, dumping from other countries and has driven down his prices. The last several years have not been good for his industry overall. I think, was that what Dave was saying? This is a disincentive, not for him to overpump, but he is not in a situation where he can make the decision not to overpump, besides what he's already done by starting his contract with a great, bro great program and getting that water delivered. The tier one water for the great program is already gone. The tier two and tier three water isn't going to touch what we need for additional water supply in this county. But he, he's taking that great water, which is actually probably going to cost more than this surcharge. But at the same time, we have to realize, as a county, every day he gets calls from other states to move his operations. And I think, you know, it might be we can use a little common sense here and maybe do a little side agreement because he has steps in place to take care of the situation and have a little balance and be fair and look at the tax revenue that would be lost and the jobs that would be lost if this operation did leave the county. I think we have to take, I mean, I was a regulator, so I understand exactly what you y'all are saying up there and why you want to be consistent and everything else. But Dave is absolutely correct when you're targeting one individual year after year after year. Okay. Thank you. John? Good afternoon. John Matthews, Pleasant Valley County Water District. First of all, I love this agency. I love the board of directors. I love the staff and I love the people who come here because we always have good discussions. Uh, but one thing I wanted to point out today, uh, the discussion about the great program is an interesting discussion, but and who's going to pay for it, who's not going to pay for it, who's in, who's out. I don't know that it really speaks to this particular issue that you're struggling with today, and I appreciate both Supervisor Bennett's comments and Director Borchard's comments. I think they are the yin and the yang of this. Um, and we, you know, the person we're talking about, I mean, for the record, is, is Casey Howling. Casey's had an operation out there that is a good operation, but we keep making some suggestion that this is the cost of replacement water. And, you know, are we going to take this money and go buy replacement water? No, we're not. Can Casey go out and buy replacement water? No, he can't. He's not a member of Cayugas. He doesn't fall within the Cayugas uh, service area. So he's, he's going to pump. So I, I think your, your discussion today ought to be, is the surcharge fair? Is it one that you feel comfortable with? Do you think it will solve the issues that you've already tried to address, which is trying to get people not to pump from, from the groundwater uh, basins? And, and the discussions, I think, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the great program, whether we're going to be online, when we're going to be online, who's involved. I'll tell you this, I'm also troubled by the concept that the, even the first skid is, is closed. When, we dra when I drafted the contract and we drafted the contract, we made it specifically clear that a lot of that water is, in essence, excess water that will be available to farmers that want to come and purchase the water. It is going to be more expensive water than what they have right now. But that, that, isn't, that water right now is not fully subscribed for the purposes, for the very purpose we didn't want to fully subscribe it and have some people feel like they were left out. If there's someone that wants to come to the table and participate in it, uh, there's provisions in the contract that allow for that. But my, my comments to you today would be just focus on the surcharge, whether or not you ought to think there ought to be a tiered rate. You know, you could tie it to the Cayugas, which is the 1315, and then if you pump over that, you pay 1315, not if... You pump 10, 10 acre feet over it, or 25 acre feet over it, or 50 acre feet over it, but you may feel that that has some uh, benefit to keeping people off the aquifer. Your job, as you've said, Lynn, is to protect the aquifers. And if this does that, then I think that's the way you ought to vote and put these ancillary comments and these other discussions off to the side in making your decision. Okay, thanks, John. 
Mike. Uh, Gearhart, could you please? Um, our spread between first uh, was $1,105 uh -huh. in the existing. And what's the jump, the, the next two jumps in uh -huh. what we did in 2010? You're talking about what defines the various tiers? The defines in 2010-07 that we did yes. start out at 1105 Uh-huh. So what's the second level? We added $250 to that. And what was the third level? And then 500 So if we do exactly the same now, we're keeping exactly the same tradition. We only just raised the base. And that's exactly what's proposed today. Thank you. Okay. Other uh, discussions? I, I wanted to add something on, or my thoughts on the automatic. Uh, I, I don't think our increases should be automatic. I think that uh, we should automatically look at what Cayegas has every year and if they've increased, but I think we need to have our own discussion. Uh, there might be a reason at some point when the board would decide not to have an increase. Uh, because uh, Cayugas did, maybe. I, I don't know what that would be, but I, I believe we should have our own discussion and set our own rates and not let the Cayugas board do it. Okay. Uh, and I would agree with that. The, 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 the surcharge rate ought to be set on whether it's effective or not. And I think the data shows that it's been effective, but for one person who has no choice but to pump. Okay, um, I, I appreciate um, I appreciate the discussion. Um, I I think you run a real risk if we start having a huge discussion on one individual and the effects on that one individual for a variety of reasons. And it, it, I think it's better that we not go down that road because that discussion could go on for a long time and I don't think that ad addresses the issue and the issue is we generate surcharges um, as a disincentive we found for a long time they were not effective we then made a policy decision to tie them to the Kiegas rate we don't do it automatically we have a discussion that's what we're having today we uh, modified our protocol um, that we go to a tier rate, as I understand it, through the first 25 acre feet, they're paying at the lower number. They only pay the marginal difference as they move themselves up. And given the fact that um, the policy is is that we've got to we've we've got to figure out a way to continue to disincentivize. And if the rate's going up, we've pegged it to that rate. I'm comfortable pegging it to that rate. And carrying on with our policy. Based on the discussion here, and, and I appreciate the discussion, and it is a good discussion. I appreciate making sure we we hear the yin and the yang, as uh, as was pointed out, of, of, of these issues. I and mean, it's it's good for all of us. Um, but hearing hearing what we've what we've uh, said here. Uh, this is what I think is the appropriate motion for us uh, to capture this. I would drop the issue of the automatic cost increase at, at this point in time. I might just quickly mention one of the ways that some people have done this because it is appropriate to say we should definitely do the rates, which would be that staff is going to automatically do it unless and, and they're going to agendize the item and we would have to take some action to not do it that would right. sort of memorialize that we're our policy you know that we're sort of so we don't say well this year we didn't do it because we have a friend that went over or whatever you know that, that kind of thing so that's that's a way that you could do it but i'm willing to drop that also at this point in time but i would like to have the motion memorialize so we don't have the 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 concern again about whether this is our policy and that is that it's our policy we have to visit it to make sure we want to do it but the motion should be our policy is uh, that we um, want to review these these surcharge rates each year and adjust them um, uh, to the cost of new water as measured by the by Cayegas's uh, tier two what mm -hmm. is it tier two rate uh, but that will be a decision of the board, but that at least we're recognizing the reason we're doing that is the policy. Because I, I, I am uncomfortable suggesting that we should 
analyze any individual in our system as we're trying to decide on the on the surcharge. So all, all I'm trying to do is say I support staff's so the motion is to support staff's recommendation and to reaffirm that the reason we're supporting it is because we have a policy that says we 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 upon review would would at least consider the adjusting our rates to um, the cost of New water is measured by Coyotes. I'm not clear. Are you adding something to? Yeah, the only thing, uh, to, to staff's recommendation, I'm adding just this, all right? That the reason, I, I support staff's recommendation, and the reason is because that is our policy to adjust the rates um, based on increasing cost of new water, which is. Okay, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm, I still don't know if you're adding words to this, which says. Uh, yeah. The, the motion or just, if you are simply stating your reason for supporting it. No, I was, I was, tr I was trying to, you know, I was trying to make that as part of the motion so it would okay, go on so the record. so you're adding words to Yeah, it. so it would go on the record so that some people would not wonder why are we doing this. Or we're doing this because this is the policy. If some, somehow, somewhere, I think we ought to make sure we affirm that that's the policy of Fox Canyon Aquifer at this point in time. It's not one we have to follow, but our policy is we're going to review when the when the cost of new water mm -hmm. goes up, that's you know something we should review mm -hmm. uh, because we we should okay. review. Our I'm just Steve. asking Al yeah. if we can add a policy that wasn't on the agenda. Well, to the extent <laughs> that the 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 recitals and the resolution embody that policy, I don't think it's really necessary. Um, certainly, uh, Supervisor Bennett can. Uh, affirm that for the record. Um, also, uh, I would point out that the ordinance code uh, does provide for the surcharge rate to be set at the the cost to import water, which is the rate that we're discussing here. But th there's the additional component of uh, groundwater conditions, uh, which may or may not support a, a surcharge adjustment. So um, I, I don't think it requires a, an additional action by your board to, uh, uh, to announce that policy or affirm that policy. I, I believe that's already set forth in the recitals. Where, where in the recital? We're not fine. Well, taken as a whole, uh, is what I what I mean in, in that um, the uh, Cayugas tier two rate has risen, and therefore uh, your board is uh, elected or is would be electing to adjust uh, the surcharge. That's, that's fine. It's, that. I don't want to confuse everything. I just move staff's recommendation and. And go. We've had enough conversation here that I think the record would. Could, would could I ask if it wouldn't satisfy all of us if we just said to be reviewed annually at the November meeting? That will they'll have to calendar it, and we can. Well, I, th I think this on a regular basis. Well, I, 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 let's not. My, my recommendation is not m mixing a bunch of apples and oranges. The apple that's in front of us. Do we adopt resolution 2013-03, which is staff's recommendation? That's you move that, and I'll second it. Okay, so that that's that's the first question that I need a motion on. The other one could deal with administrative issues directing staff. We want to see this on uh, direction to staff. The, yeah, direction to staff um, within within a reasonable time after Kiegas adjusts its rates uh, and prior to the rate setting process, it needs to be on the board agenda so we can either affirm it or. Uh, deny it so that'll be a staff recommendation to do that okay Dave you want to say something okay I don't know why you wouldn't just leave it up to staff and, or, or and let them decide when they think that we've got a surcharge rate that is ineffective okay so I, I think we can deal with that issue administratively um, and uh, so let's just deal with the resolution 2013-03 do I have a motion to adopt you have a motion and a second okay the motion and who's the second I was Okay, you made the motion, Steve? Yes, and the second. Okay, any other discussion from the members? All right, let's have a roll call, please. Chair Mulhart? Yes. Director Payman? Yes. Director Bennett? Yes. Director Kelly? Yes. Director Fortune? No. Okay, let's deal with um, item number four. 
Chair Mohart, uh, board members, members of the audience, my pleasure to be presenting this item as well. It's item number four, it's a request to cost share for one year a portion of the watershed coordinator position for the Santa Clara River watershed. Uh, I have a short presentation. Of course, you also have the written materials in your staff report and your package today, um, as well as we have representatives um, who can answer some questions. Okay, let's go through the uh, presentation quickly. Okay, very good. So a little background as usual. Uh, the variety of agencies and stakeholders within the Santa Clara watershed uh, that are working, um, that have proposed a position to focus on outreach and coordination of programs within the watershed. Uh, funding and oversight of the position is proposed through a cost sharing arrangement through a variety of stakeholders in both watershed areas, uh, including the Watershed Protection District, uh, some of the local cities, uh, water districts, including United, uh, some local NGOs, and other interests, including the Farm Bureau. The cost is estimated to be $65,000 annually, and this position would be housed or employed by the Nature Conservancy. And that's similar to an arrangement uh, that the, Senate, uh, the Ventura River Watershed Council has also employed. They have a position, they have a watershed coordinator, and that position is housed with one of the non-governmental agencies, the Ojai Valley Land Conservancy. So I've already said that first bullet. Uh, starting on a year-to-year -year basis, uh, this position would, uh, and this coordinator would seek additional funding for the out years. Some of the things that the coordinator would do, including coordination of some of the watershed management uh, activities. They would also, uh, per the management goals, if there were established mission and vision statements, they would coordinate some of those activities. They would work with the stakeholders to implement uh, some of the assessments of current conditions within the watershed um, and identify any data gaps. And they would compile some of the technical studies that have already been um, completed and compile those into a watershed assessment summary, which ultimately would lead to a comprehensive uh, watershed management plan. Some of the benefits of a watershed coordinator would include some regional cooperation, working within the watershed with many of the agencies, entities, and individuals to enhance uh, the, the watershed's water resources. It also include information sharing in a forum for discussion. Uh, for example, there are state and federal funding sources, um, and as some of those decline, it would be increasingly important to use some of the best, uh, best use of some of the limited local funding, uh, develop some cost-effective solutions to some of the water supply problems that are facing the watershed. Uh, this approach has been successfully used in other areas, uh, specifically in Southern California, Ventura River I already, man already mentioned, uh, the Malibu Creek area, Tahunga Wash. Um, they've also greatly benefited from the presence of a dedicated watershed coordinator. And then funding opportunities, as you are well aware of, Prop 50, Prop 84, uh, we, the county through the Watershed Coalition Group has been very successful in uh, bringing significant revenue to the local agencies that's helped to pay for some of the uh, needed infrastructure, habitat restoration, water quality improvements, and recreational enhancements. So those are some of the benefits. Uh, the agent I've included in your packet today, you can see the cost allocation table listing the agencies that have committed and some that are in the process of being committed. Uh, the request is for $1,500 uh, from this agency, which represents 2% of the total. Uh, we are recommending funding for one year, this $1,500, uh, small amount. The benefits that I've listed are already and a number of participants uh, included in the watershed group. Oops. With that, uh, include uh, presentation. Be happy to answer your questions. Any questions? Move the approval. Okay. Motion to approve okay. and a second. Any discussion uh, from the audience? Can we have a roll call, please? Chair Mulhart. Yes. Director Craven. Yes. Director Bennett. Yes. Director Kelly? Yes. Director Fortune? Yes. Okay, we have uh, some administrative reports. Um, any questions on any of those? 
Uh, just a heads up, there is an executive committee uh, meeting scheduled for November the 15th. It'll be at 2 p.m. and it will be uh, in room 346, the public works side of the building. Okay. And um, any other comments? We have exactly four minutes to go to hit the one hour point. Should we wait or we just call it quits? I, can I have a show? Oh. Okay, thanks. Meeting adjourned. Oh, do we have to uh, receive and file we have the to receive and file the uh, informational second. items? Second. And a second. Any objections? So moved. Executive Director's report. Okay, here we go. See you in December. Happy Thanksgiving. What are you going to dress up for? Is I, I thought I'd dress up as a retired airline pilot. How about that? Uh, <laughs>